All right, how you guys doing? We're talking about the truck series here. This is this is pretty much just gonna be me talking. Uh, I don't really have much for you to look at other than like some like basic data points that look. In, in my opinion, truly, let's wind the clocks back. You know, a few months. Okay, entering last year, we were well aware that GMS would cease operation and GMS fabrication would see would cease operation. Uh, as they turn their attention uh, fully into, you know, Legacy Motor Club and stuff like that. And so for the Truck Series team, that meant no more trucks from GMS. That meant no more uh, fabrication, prep, setup, uh, any of that stuff offered to other teams that would want that. We, we had several uh, other Chevy teams or other teams, uh, you know, send trucks or buy trucks from GMS if they tear stuff up or if they need equipment or whatever stuff to do, especially if you're a small team, you'll just pay somebody like GMS to take your trucks and set them up for you, then ship them back or go pick them up before the race weekend and stuff like that. And so we lost GMS, which was truly a, a big bread and butter for like the mid tier to bottom tier, like Chevy teams and really just teams in general. Cause like, look, manufacturers don't really matter for the truck series. Um, uh, especially if you're not getting factory support, uh, like, KBM was like KBM was the factory supported, you know, Chevy team. Uh, GMS was past that. Uh, you were getting all your, if you, if you were looking for cars to get set up and stuff, you're going through GMS. Um, so we lost not only that for the bottom and middle tier of the pack to get their cars worked on and stuff. We also lost them in general as, as a team, you know, and finger had to, had to jump over, um, to, I just went, I just absolutely went blank to the nine car, um, who he had been um, helping on off with uh, since he left Thor Sport. Um, and we had, you know, several GMS teams just not be here anymore. And so when we look at how the standings were, like in terms of uh, performance-wise and like a performance matrix and stuff like that, you understand that we're losing, you know, several spots in the top 12 of where these cars were and stuff. And i got to pause this real fast. So you lose, um, you know, several of those teams like with, within the top you know, 15 standings, you remove those GMS guys, and other guys slide up to fill those roles. You can argue that Rackley Racing kind of moves up. You can argue that some of the lower, uh, like, secondary and tertiary teams from, like, McAnally, from Nice Motorsports kind of slide up in there. You know, from the Thor Sports guys, you know, like, that that moves, like, the 66 that Connor Jones had from, like, you know, the 19th, 18th, 17th best truck to now. They're, like, the 14th, 15th by, like, default because they're taking over. All, everybody kind of slides up in that. And then the top tier was KBM, who not only provided some of the faster cars, even though Dean Thompson couldn't do a freaking thing with them, even though Chase Purdy couldn't do a freaking thing with them because they suck. Those are still, like, by default, by definition, the best equipment in the series. Okay, clearly, you know, the 51 and KBM, or Kyle Busch and his car there and stuff. And so you have them also, who are, you know, top of the top equipment-wise, also providing assistance to other teams who have enough money to pay them, like, for example, Cody Robal had said multiple times, certainly towards the end of the year, uh, which I don't know why he was so quiet about it and stuff, but they were saying that, hey, man, I started basically going to the KBM shop, having them set these cars up, having them be as full-blown KBM machines and stuff, and then Spire swoops in and just buys KBM and stuff. And so you lose that as well. I'm not saying Spire isn't already doing that or there, has, there aren't teams taking over for that. I'm sure Nice is kind of taking some of that... Um, uh, what is it? Not fulfillment, but you know that position of you know, hey man, you, you poor motherfuckers over there in the truck team that has like two full time guys working on this, like, you know, I, I guess we'll we'll set up for you. We got a shop, use our stuff or whatever. Like uh, other teams will certainly fill that, but in the grand scheme of things, we've lost KBM, we've lost GMS, and so like that really wrangles up the whole standings and stuff. You know, uh, McAnally has more. Um, not support, rather, but more cars. You know, they're kind of filling the role of that. Um, you know, adding adding a third car with Daniel Die. You have these. You have you have these fake teams that like act like they have speed, like uh, like you know, like Faction Racing, Freedom Racing. Who you know, Spencer Boyd claimed that he had purchased a lot of old GMS stuff. Well, I can tell you, firsthand experience. Uh, the Freedom Racing more like you're gonna lapse down a lot in these races racing. Um, and so we do. We just have a lot of uh, open holes in there. And then we have like Tricon, who was already, you know, basically sitting from like fourth to tenth in terms of you know uh, where their cars were equipment-wise any given week. Like they're kind of the de facto like true bread 
the true uh true blue motley crew you know top of the line uh you know race team and stuff and so the reason i'm kind of going into this is because where i'm at is you know we understand where everybody is like uh, it's not being lazy like we understand that spire has some fantastic cars and equipment it's literally just that their guys are just absolutely trash and they're just learning how to race like they're running with training wheels like chase purdy is like learning how to drive we have raja Caruth who is learning how to drive good speed but like still got the training wheels on we got uh mcanally you know with christian eckes who is literally a top three car in every single race tyler Enkram, identical car and identical speed He's going to run 11th every single race. Like, he, he still has the training wheels on. He, he's learning how to drive. You know, we have Tricon, basically the biggest team now. You know, you have Dean Thompson, who is, if you're actually trying to win GPPs, I mean, Dean Thompson is going to win you a ton of money and lose you a ton of money each and every week. We have the two Tanner Gray brothers, or the two Gray brothers, who are 6th and 7th in every single race. Like, we, we understand where a lot of these teams are fall in like it's tricon it's mcanally it's spire fighting for the top we have thor sport kind of flipping where all those four guys are every given week but that's roughly your top you know 10 cars you know throw a Stuart freezing in there uh every now and then throw a cr7 motorsports in there with great end finger and you know when you're looking at the top 12 and stuff you know throw a nice motorsport in there and then you have you know you're looking at some of the top 15 Top 18 guys, you know, fill it out with the rest of the Tricon or rest of the uh, rest of the Thor Sport cars and stuff. And then by that point, you're at the midfield and the mid-pack guys where you have Ty Dillon, you have Timmy Hill, you have, uh, you know, I haven't even mentioned Nick Sanchez and in, in, in the Rev Racing, which is like, you know, a fully funded just one truck operation who is going to compete for wins and stuff. You throw him in the top five. And so it's not as simple as who is ranked first entering this weekend who is ranked second entering this weekend. For the most part, where I'm standing at, I'm taking all that data, all those books that we have in terms of, well, this team was fast last year. Well, these teams average, like, uh, similar to kind of what I do for Cup and, Xfinity, or Cup and Xfinity, where I kind of show you where those where everybody kind of fit in in those races. I just kind of throw that, and I'm throwing it in the trash, okay? This is a new era, new season, new year, okay? New teams, gigantic gaps, gigantic shift in the top of the line, category i don't think there's a clear favorite right now i don't think there's a clear favorite in the mid-tier teams either okay and so when i'm looking at las vegas this weekend and i'm looking at the truck series in general okay we have seen who has you know competent aerodynamic setup wise speed at daytona and atlanta and i know some people get really annoyed when i'm like they had they had true blue speed by themselves okay but it's the same thing that we look at at Pocono and at Michigan. If you're a bad team, if you got bad equipment, if you don't know how to set shit up, you're going to be slow with those tracks, okay? If you got a bad team, bad equipment, you don't know how to set things up, you're not going to be competing for the win at Atlanta, okay? Christian Eckes had the fastest machine at Atlanta, you know, random brake issues and stuff. But, like, you're not going to have, you know, people that don't deserve to be up front be up front at Atlanta, Okay? It's impressive seeing that Matt Mills and Nice Carp was able to be up front, that Dean Thompson was able to be up front, that Lane Riggs was able to be up front. Okay, especially when, you know, Kyle Bush is basically 1v1ing the entire field on the inside lane by himself, okay? Like, we can't forget that. We can't just look away from that type of stuff. That is like, oh, wow, you know, like, no shit, Spyro's gonna be fast, but like, dude, Kyle Bush is by himself on the inside lane. He got he ain't got nobody helping him at all, and he is racing the entire field by himself on this outside lane. Like, of course, Spire, of course Kyle Bush is going to be the favorite, you know? Like, okay, fine. Clear number one favorite, Kyle Bush. we got to figure out everybody else. You know, we can argue Nicholas Sanchez, Eckes, Bell for your, second, for your second, third, fourth place guy, but, like, you know, all that, for me, uh, isn't necessarily a waste of time, but, like, I would much rather... Enter this year with an open mind, not have any biases entering these weekends, and look at the practice data. Look at what they're bringing in racing. Look at what they're bringing in for this year and seeing how the field kind of falls through, especially in the races where Kyle Busch isn't in the seven car. Is it just him? Is it the seven car? Like, you know, that's a real discussion. I think in situations where Kyle Busch isn't in the race, I think these races are very open to a Tricon car winning, Nicholas Sanchez winning, Christian Eckes winning. Um, you know, and that's roughly like eight. Uh, of the top 10 cars that I mentioned, you know, we got all the Tricon guys up there. 
Um, we haven't even mentioned the Thor Sport guys, but like with the Thor Sports dudes, like it's it's Majeski and, and Rhodes. We understand that they're going to be top ten contenders. We know Crafton's going to sit like twelfth. Jake Garcia is going to Jake Garcia. Whatever he, you know, if he wants to show up and race some weekends, he's going to race. If, he's not, if he doesn't want to race, he's not going to show up. Um, and so, and anyway, in terms of this Las Vegas preview, and in terms of you know looking into Las Vegas and stuff for this week, I am going to lean primarily on off the trailer speed and practice and how these guys are doing in long runs, you know, in my opinion, a different approach compared to like, well, you know, I did my truck video earlier or I did my uh, cup series video earlier and we can kind of see where everybody should fall in line here. Here. I'm just taking everything as like a clean slate. Let's see where everybody sits. Let's see how fast everybody are. Let's see if they can replicate where they are in terms of practice speeds in qualifying. You know, there's a good indication, especially in the truck series, Practice speed is usually a good indicator of where these guys are. Uh, we might run into semantics and, and, you know, caveats and, you know, if and buts and stuff when we're, like, splitting hairs between, like, who is the third best and fourth best car? Who is the seventh and eighth best car? But for the most part, we can see exactly where the groups and, and cars are, especially in a field like this, only 32 cars, everybody's making the field. And especially on a green flag speed at an intermediate track like this, you have a great idea of where the bottom tier teams are like last week I posted, or, you know, you know, at Atlanta I posted a video, kind of like a meme video. I'm like, bro, we're lap seven, and Rayum is running ass last, like just on a completely, like, different class. We are multi-class racing here. We got Freedom Racing, you know, like about to go a lap down on, like, lap ten here in a full bore, full throttle event. Like, these guys are slow as can be. We are, we're going to see... We're going to very easily be able to see where everybody falls in line in terms of uh, intermediate package, in terms of those guys and, and stuff like that. Um, and so, you know, when we're looking at the preview for Atlanta, I don't mean to, like, not really have anything, but uh, it's Tricon, it's Nicolas Sanchez, it's Spire. I want to see where all those guys kind of fall into. I'm sure we're going to have probably one of each of these teams kind of leading the way for their respective team. You know, like Nicolas Sanchez most likely going to be at finishing the top five. Kyle Busch, most likely going to finish in the top five. Tanner Gray and Taylor Gray going to argue to be top ten contenders. Um, we have, you know, Ty Majeski and Ben Rhodes going to be top ten contenders, just kind of seeing where we land and everything. Um, Raj Karuth going to probably aim for anywhere from 9th to 11th in terms of his projection and stuff like that. And that's just kind of where I'm at, you know, right now without looking at practice data and stuff like that. But uh, it, I think it'll be pretty clean and green in terms of where we are practice wise and uh being able to replicate that in the race especially because they're just they're qualifying and then they're racing a few hours later and it's still going to be warm it's still going to be hot i think you know green flag is roughly at uh let's let, let's uh let's go ahead and find green flag is going to wave at they qualify three my time to one o'clock their time or two o'clock and then they end up racing at eight my times so at seven six. They're going to race at six or seven their time. Still going to be pretty warm at the start of the race. Short stage is thirty thirty, and then seventy four laps to end it. Uh, basically, stage two doesn't even fucking exist. We're we're going to go green and stage two at like twenty two laps. You know, so um, I I think practice is going to be a pretty good indicator of where all these teams fall, um, and and where they're at. And so in terms of that, I'm going to wait till practice uh, to really pinpoint projections and stuff like that. But I think that's really the uh, the preview for the truck race. Very quickly, for those of you who, uh, who 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 saw how my week started last weekend, I am so happy. You know, as a troll, as somebody who enjoys just riling people up, the fact that I had Mussolini himself riled up on Twitter uh, just made my life. I had Toby Christie call me an asshole. I got Steven's mother tweeting at me. You know, and then I and then I'm taking a picture in front of their trailer in the garage at Atlanta. I mean, my entire week was made, man. I had people on both of the aisles. Like, uh, let's uh, let's look at this whole debacle real fast. Now, I mean, now we're having fun. You know, this is just uh, this is some fan service and stuff like that. You know, this is what I posted uh, when when Steven was like, "Oh man, dude, it, what if I enter a race? What if what if I can find a race car to enter at Atlanta?" And so like, you know, <laughs> Toby Christie's have, having a good time. And uh, where are we at here? Let's uh, let's find let's find. Uh, I'm trying to find the asshole one. Where do you call me an asshole at, man? 
Oh boy, is it this one here? Did he delete it? Hold on, I gotta find it. Yeah, yeah, here we are. We got a, we got, we got TC calling me, calling me, calling me an asshole. We got a. Where are we at, Stephen? Where are we at here, brother? I'm too far down. Way too far down. Where am I at here? I got, you know. I got I got a NASCAR truck series driver mom tweeting at me. Are you for real? Are you kidding me, man? I mean, dude, my week was made before I even made it to Atlanta. You know, the funny thing is I had people from both sides of the aisle. I had people messaging me saying, just take the L. This beef is stupid. Why are you arguing with these idiots? And then I had other people on the other side saying, dude, Steven is just chasing clout. He, this guy's a fucking clown. Um, view posting, like 9,000 views. Very little replies in either way. This thing gets retweeted, uh, you know, by Steven. Uh, let me see. Which I don't even, I just, I just have, I have people send me stuff from him. Let, let's see how many, let's see if I got ratioed when he retweeted. Uh, he's still just yapping, yapping, yapping. 8,000 people saw this, and there was no interest at all. There's nothing, man. This guy's a fucking clown. Um, so, you know, I, dude, my week was made. I, I, have no, I have no need to even continue this. I had, no, I had no reason to even continue tweeting here. I had already won. I had taken the W, man. As, as, as a troll... You get that type of reaction out of you. I get a NASCAR driver's mom tweeting at me. My life was was made. This this made my entire week before I even head off to the track. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's that. That's my opinion there. But uh, I'll see you guys for the live show on Thursday. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll break everything down uh, once we get qualifying and practice done. So I'll see you guys then.